Hi, you're with me, Soraya Mia, and today we are going to talk about Girls for Goals with four inspiring people, Kashika Subaru, Melissa from Women's Aid Organization, and Adni Winifred, a cricket player. So hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. How is everyone doing? Yeah. Okay. Doing good. Good. I hope the yeah, MCO is treating everyone well. So today, um, let's just get started with um, Melissa. So you are a representative from the WAO or the Women's Aid Organization. So um, right now, there's a campaign going on called Girls for Goals. Can you please um, tell me what it's really about and how it is important in not only raising funds for uh, girls in the um, marginalized communities, but also um, the importance of this campaign being online as the video is being shared online. Yes, thank you for that question. So um, I'm with Women's Aid Organization and we work on eliminating uh, violence and gaining uh, gender equality. So for this, uh, using the Girls for Girls Challenge, there's actually two main objectives. So number one is we want to address girls' rights. So their rights to uh, be equal, their rights to health, and their right, uh, their right to play sports and have recreation, even during the time of MCO. So um, the only way we think of having to push this forward is through online because everyone's stuck at home. So uh, by doing the challenge, and this is where we have our sports ambassador, Kashika, who has come in, uh, and also all the other sports personalities that are with us here. So we need Fred for cricket and Annie for football. So we are trying to think of how girls can gain their rights through the awareness of sports. And at the same time, we're also fundraising. And the fundraising is for immediate needs to uh, actually have 230 self-care packages going to girls that are most in need. So we're trying to uh, get this so that no girls are left behind in terms of health and um, nutrition and so forth. All right. So um, I believe that this campaign is raising 23,000 ringgit for the yeah. girls. It's very inspiring. So um, let's move on to uh, Said Adni. I, I saw your video online and you mentioned about equal right. So can you please explain what that means to you? Uh, well, I think it's uh, just... Um not just in sports, I think it's everything, uh, equal rights for men and women. They, they want to have, to have the same rights. And uh, we can see across the world that only three quarter, um, three quarter of women enjoy the same opportunities, uh, resources, um, protections as, as the men. So it's a big gap between uh, the men and women. And, uh, you know, we don't have to speak about the Middle East. Um, but you know, we can see that it's progressing in the in around the world. Um, countries are realizing that uh, women should have equal rights to, as as men, and um, I think it's important for everyone to realize that. Um, so uh, I think it's uh, like um, we need us to progress for for that. You know, if you look in sports, like um, football. Australia, they have uh, fought for their um, equal rights as the as the men, and they have won that, and uh, they are earning the same amount of uh, money as the as the, the men in the football league. So the top women uh, footballers in Australia, you know, they have uh, pointed out that um, you know equal rights is uh, as important just um, as the sport. And um, in America, they recently won the 2019 Women's World Cup. They are also uh, fighting for the for equal rights as um, there's a massive uh, difference in the the payments that they receive. Um, compared to the men, and uh, you, you all know that in the men's football, like, they are earning millions and millions a year in um, in, uh, in America. You, know, you don't have to speak about Europe; that's a different level. But um, yeah, um, I, like uh, I think it was uh, the American captain uh, uh, Megan Rapinoe um, who captained them to win the World Cup, and um, America has actually won four. Um, World Cup since it, it, it's been established. So the women's uh, football in America, they are thinking that you know they are they are playing um, just as equal as the men. So um, yeah, they're, they're fighting for their rights. They want the same kind of payments. Um, we can see that the World Cup for men, I think, uh, 
the prize money prize pool is about 400 million US dollars uh, or so and uh, for the women it's only 30 million so it's a massive difference so I think uh, that's what they're fighting for they're putting in the same work they're, they're training at the same way um, you know so they, they want uh, improvements um, compared to the men so I think it's a uh, it's something that is rightly so uh, fighting for, and uh, hopefully in the future that um, you know uh, the rights are the same, the payments are the same. Um, it's just a, it's a work. It's a lot of work. I'm sure it's a lot of work, and um, I totally agree with you. Not only in sports, but I believe that women, women's rights or equal rights should be brought forward more, especially in Malaysia. All right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, sorry to cut you there. Um, like we don't really know too much about women's football in Malaysia, how they've been treated. But back uh, maybe ten years ago, when I was playing with the national team, um, you know, uh, sometimes we we were put in. We didn't get the privilege of staying in the hotel like they do now, but uh, we stayed in FAM, the home base of the Malaysian football. And uh, yeah, we got to um, sometimes see. Uh, the women train and uh, you know you can see there's a massive gap between uh, uh, what, what they are working with what they are training with and what the men do have so you know that was a long time ago I don't know how how much it is and has improved now but uh, still we don't really know too much about um, our our women's national football or um, are there leagues out there for the women's to um, to build on their game to, to you know to if they, if they had the dream to for football to be something in their life, uh, you know, it has to be taken more seriously. So what, what about the EPL? Um, you're a Liverpool fan. So what are your hopes <laughs> for the EPL? Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of mixed um, views out there, opinions out there, where whether the league should be stopped, whether it should resume. As a Liverpool fan, of course, we want it to resume because... Um, 25 points ahead and uh, you know two wins we that means we win the league so there's um there's been a few more leagues out there who have cancelled their um, cancelled their season but um, I think it was uh, Belgium who cancelled the season but they named Club Rouge as the champions but like um, I think it was um, Holland Holland they just recently cancelled their league but they have not named any any champions, whoever's got relegated or anything, but I hope it doesn't doesn't happen in England because 30 years is a, is a long time. And uh, like Kashiko over there, she's just praying that season's cancelled. <laughs> hey, we have Kashika on the other um, side, who is a Manchester United fan. So, um, what are your hopes for the EPL this year? And also. Um, since the country is under the MCO and you are a football coach, so how has life been treating you and how is the training that is being halted? Um, is it affecting you and your motivation to motivate your students? Um, so in regards of the Premier League, I think for United, it doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, Liverpool has such a big gap at the top, so might as well let them win the league. Uh, as for your second question, um, I think it's a bit strange because you spend so much of your time on the pitch, being outdoors, um, you know, playing your sport outdoor, coaching outdoors. Uh, when the MCO started, obviously, uh, it was very hard to adjust. But now we've gotten into a rhythm where we're doing live trainings online with my entire team. So that has been a bit better instead of doing nothing at all. So we're still working on our fitness and we're still working on whatever skills we can with the limited space. Uh, but ideally, we want to get back out and train on the pitch again. I think a lot of the players, it's been a bit of a mixed bag of um, emotions. Some of them are very motivated to continue training so that they're better when we're out of this period. Uh, quite a few of them kind of slacked off as well um, because they feel like it's not going to get better anytime soon. So that has been interesting to, to try and motivate your players that do not want to train or do not want to participate in sports as well. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So now we have Winifred, who is a Malaysian cricket player and also the amb sports ambassador for Women's Aid organization. So hi, Winifred. Um, hi. I'd like to know, how do you stay motivated um, personally um, in terms of, especially in, in hard times like this, and how do you train uh, 
when there's so so much going on and how do you, how do you, would you, what would you like to tell the viewers out there on how to stay motivated okay uh, how i stay motivated is by uh, getting motivation from my friends and family and i'm very uh, how to say like i'm very happy to get good friends out there who always motivate me and keep me strong to make me continue playing the sports especially and i would say um why i chose uh, this to do this uh, for the women's uh, girls for goals challenge was to um, help girls out there because like we can see that many people say that girls are weak and do not have enough uh, courage to do anything so through sports and exercise girls can prove uh, to the world that whatever men can do girls also can do the same so um like uh, now nowadays uh, we are continuing our training by uh, zoom we are doing our fitness with our trainer so that's a very good uh, way to continue training and it's helping us and it's uh, also motivating us to continue playing the sports and not just uh, forgetting about the sports all right so winifred what is the future for cricket in malaysia uh so far uh, i can see that uh international cricket is going up so for us it's also going it will go up slowly as now we are rank uh, 31 in the in the world so uh, by training and keeping fit always we can see now we have a lot of improvement from our girls as well and i hope the other girls out there also uh follow follow the flow and also keep fit and do their skill training because of uh, now we are in uh, in the lockdown situation so um i hope the girls follow uh, everything the coach and also our trainer give us and keep fit and uh from there we'll see how our women's team will go melissa um yes. i'd like to know for the women's aid organization what is the biggest challenge faced in the period of the mco because um as reported there's many um cases of domestic violence and such especially in times like this yeah so there are clear differences um for example in february compared to april the numbers of calls and texts uh asking for help when uh people are facing violence has gone up more than 100% and within all these cases uh it has gone up so high that WHO now has a hotline to add on to the government hotline which is talian kasih and we are consistently seeing the numbers spike up uh we are very worried that because everyone's in lockdown uh they in some cases they might not even be able to call out for help so our core work uh, a lot of it is also in relation to eliminating violence including violence within your own homes So if uh one of the main target areas also for the girls for goals challenge is for goals uh girls to be free from all forms of violence including those perpetrated at home. So it's very challenging if we cannot reach them. So linking it to the challenge again, uh we are trying to raise funds so that one the girls can receive self care packages but after that if we can even get them still in touch with us somehow online through their own support group online maybe we can know what is happening in each home uh during the lockdown and when their uh, their voices still come out and they can still get the support that they need so this support can be in many things so WHO also provides for example shelter or if you need to go to the hospital because you've been beaten or have been abused so these are the range of work that we have and these are the form of rights that we say so if possible if uh people would spread the word and support this challenge um uh, and contribute to our fund which is on uh, WHO's website then we would be able to do this work and we can reach more uh, girls all over Malaysia I really hope so too so let's just have um Said Annie to maybe 
talk about your, the video that you have posted about the um, campaign, Girls for Goals. Why did you do the ex uh, particular ex exercise? Uh, well, uh, I have to thank uh, Kishuke as well. She's the one who gave me the challenge. And um, yeah, um, well, we have all different exercises. Uh, Kishuke started with the lunges. I thought, um, you know, get the, the squats then uh, because we, you know, uh, everyone talks about leg day. So, you know, gave them a leg day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just uh, to try and, um, you know, put out there there's so many like even though we're in this uh small spaces where um you know a lot of people i've heard complain that they can't go out and run can't go out and do this but in the sh small spaces you can you can be creative and just do whatever you can in the small space i um just run in uh, along outside my hall and you know i can i can get about five to six kilometers right there uh, in that small space and um you know, it's a, it's the space isn't is not the limitate uh, limitation. You can you can can do more even though you have the smallest of spaces. You you can do stuff where you don't even need equipment. So um, I think it's no excuse for someone to complain in a small space that they can't do any workouts, so they can't keep fit. Um, it all can be done. You just have to put your mind to it and do it. Right. And Kashika. How, what about you? What is the most creative workout that, as a coach for football have, that have you done in a small confined space? Um, so we've been doing a lot of online um, training, as I mentioned earlier, but what we've tried to incorporate is the football element into it as well. So it's been very uh, challenging to try to use a very small space because your players can only see this big um, of a frame. So you have to try to get get them to do the skill portion of the workouts uh, with a football in that amount of space. So I think every day has been a different challenge and we make it up as we go as well sometimes. Um, I think that requires quite a bit of creativity. All right, well, before we end this chat, if, uh, does anyone have anything that would like to share? Just for the information, because we may have spoken too quickly and if anyone wants to read further, uh, you can easily find Women's Aid Organization on our Facebook uh, and other social media platforms, even on Instagram. And within there, in the bio, there's more information. Um, you can just share it out. So when I say you, I don't just mean girls. Although the uh, program or the challenge is called Girls for Goals, but it's for anyone. We can see like any is also uh, supporting us. Men can support us. Anyone of any gender can support us and we're trying to get the word out, please share with your friends uh, and maybe we can come together and the next time we have this conversation, you can have girls as the champion of their own rights and reach those goals. Great, so does that mean I can also um, make my own video and yeah, challenge someone? Yeah, challenge three friends. Challenge three friends. Okay, I, I definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you very much for joining our um, little interview. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day ahead.